Hey guys, Nather here once again, giving you a follow-up video on the Mjolnir Spectral Throw sort of Thor cosplay uh, character. And at this point, it's level 94 and has completed all the content, including Uber Elder, uh, something like four or five times. However, I did also try out a claw version of the build, one where you do not throw hammers and instead throw something a bit more practical like a claw, which is multi-modded with some really good things. And uh, long story short, they each have their strengths and weaknesses, though for pure endgame the claw version is going to go a lot further I think, at least for single target damage. This is what you're going to be seeing for the next few minutes, um, is the Mjolnir version, so it is still throwing actual hammers and getting lots and lots of arc and ball lightning procs, and for the most part it's be much better for uh, delving and for general map clear. The strength of the build is being able to proc your uh, arcs off of your shield charge, which is pretty damn strong defensively and offensively for the speed. As well as that, you do get twice as many arcs going out on the really large packs, which is uh, pretty damn good in certain delve scenarios. And especially if you pair it with a Call of the Brotherhood in the end, you do have quite a lot of uh, potential freeze chance, and it just feels like a very strong mapper and delver. Uh, probably one of the fastest I could possibly make, where you're just shield charging around doing a lot of arcs and uh, killing packs very quickly. However, it is a little bit clunky to put together, given that it is, um, well, the Mjolnir build. There's quite a lot of attack speed that goes into it, and then a fair amount of strength balancing too. So it wasn't the easiest character to uh, gear up and fine-tune to the best of its ability, though it's at the base not too hard to put together, just when you're really trying to fine-tune it. It may take a bit of work in um, gear crafting and gear buying, because uh, it's nothing terribly expensive, just specific shit that you do need, like the attack speed jewels and the strength on your gear. And uh, in the end, it was very, very smooth for these sorts of little delve cities and stuff. I managed to hit 6.7k life. Now, the fact is you have Fortify on top of that as well. So the play style and the damage is similar to what my Poet's Pen character did, which was a very strong delving character overall. Except this time around, we have the mobility of Shield Charge. You also have the Fortify from Shield Charge and um, just a much bigger life pool as well as life regeneration system through the life gain on hit on the ball lightnings. So if you're looking for a character similar to the Poet's Pen Inquisitor that I was doing, then this one is uh, probably just a bit more durable for the entire Betrayal League. Uh, you can then see the examples of single target here. I got through all of the tier 16 guardians fine, uh, like a couple times maybe, and I think I did two or three Uber Elder runs with this version of the character, and it is fine. The single target is just nothing mind-blowing. It's, you know, okay. You'll get through the bosses. They don't die anywhere near as quick as some of the other builds have done this league, but um, it will do it, which is something, you know, good for Mjolnir these days, because... Um, back in the day, a Mjolnir single target was a very sad thing to behold, especially with its 0.5 second cooldown on the triggered uh, attacks. These days, it is a lot better. It's still nothing too mind-blowing, but it can at least get all the content down, including Uber Elder, which is a clip I have for you at the end of this video. So at this point, Mjolnir can actually do all content, even as this spectral throw rather than a Cyclone version. It's just not particularly well suited for the end game bossing. It's a lot better as a delver and a mapper. This clip starting from here and a few more after this one are actually the claw version of the build. So at this point, I made a claw that can be thrown pretty well with hits can't be evaded, put on a different shield, a few different jewels, and this is the single target result. Uh, this has much more single target damage, and that's because your attack speed is a lot better, your crit is a lot better, and the weapon plus shield combo gives you quite a lot of extra damage as well compared to what the Mjolnir would do. So in the end, the arc and ball lightning I have in my chest will hit a lot harder. So for this uh, setup, it was actually a lot smoother on the bossing and a lot smoother on Uber Elders. Uh, however, it's just a little less nice for mapping, I'd say, because you don't proc uh, any arcs off of your shield charges, uh, so you are entirely reliant of throwing spectral throws uh, every few packs and all of that. 
By no means was it bad, it was still a very nice mapping playstyle, just if you're looking for the best one of the two, then Mjolnir has a slightly nicer mapping playstyle, but this one will have much, much higher um, end game viability, I think, because it's a lot easier to build. You don't have to have any specific strength requirements. Your attack speed can be as good or as mediocre as you want it to be, and you'll still be okay. And uh, in the end, it's going to have much bigger single target against these Uber Elder and uh, Guardian type mechanics. The Mjolnir, however, it will take quite a few more jewels and attack speed scaling for it to feel good. And even then, the single target is never anything to really write home about. So I want to show you guys the setup uh, at this point and the setup with the claw. So here was the character in the end. He did hit level 94, so it's still a very fun character because uh, if I take it past 92, maybe even past 93, it means I'm having quite a lot of fun and it is very smooth for mapping. So uh, I could have easily pushed to 95 as well, but it was probably time to start something else. So I did hit 94, it was very smooth for mapping, and the entire setup uh, hasn't really changed since the last video, I don't think. For the most part, I will mention the um, life gain on hit with spells rings. Uh, if you can get two of those, or the Vitality um, Watcher's Eye that does life gain on hit for spells, that shit is amazing. Uh, this stuff can keep me up through some really tough situations, uh, especially if there's lots of packs going out. Then the fact is you can get a lot of uh, ball lightnings going out and they do help your um, uh, survivability, your life gain hit immensely. Kind of feels like old Vile Pact style where you can go from, you know, 20% life straight back up to full almost instantly. So I do recommend that for both versions of the build, whether you're doing Mjolnir or a Spectral Throw with um, a Claw. So there's not really anything else to mention for the Mjolnir version. Like I said, it is just... Um, very good for mapping and uh, pretty damn fun overall and very good for delving. It does require some strength on your gear. So for me, it was something like three or four pieces that had strength on them. Your passive tree has to be tailored towards strength a bit more. So we did go through this area here, got a bit of strength down there. And ultimately, you do need jewels that have uh, attack speed. So it's a bit clumsy trying to get, you know, six jewels that all have decent amount of attack speed. And uh, if that's a bit too much of a worry, then yeah, the claw version is a lot easier to gear in that sense. So to move on to the claw version, simply put, you just grab a uh, Gemini, um, specifically a Gemini because mana gain on hit is rather nice just to have so you don't have to worry about mana for you know, no regen maps, for example. Uh, you can spectral throw as much as you freaking want. So a Gemini claw with an attack speed mod, uh, just isolate that grab a multi mod and then you can do a hits can't be evaded a percent spell chaos and non chaos is chaos and then a crit chance so all in all it's a very easy claw to craft but it will cost you something like 5x to uh put together this exact claw you don't necessarily have to you can just start out with um attack speed and crit that's it uh try and find a claw that looks something like that and then um, maybe craft a spell damage on there. And that should cost you like 5 chaos, so that's no big deal. And then you can combo it with the Lycosidae if you want. So that would be a super budget option, for example, by doing that. And that'll still work pretty damn well. But if you want to min-max, uh, you then grab a shield that's either got lightning damage or spell damage, uh, some life, and a spare prefix slot. So you can craft non chaos as chaos on that as well. Put that on over your Lycosidae and get the hits can't be evaded. And... Um, then you have basically the same build still, but just a little bit different. I then also want to um, try and go out of my way to get a bit more cooldown recovery speed because uh, my attack speed is going to be a lot better. My spectral throws are going to be probably procking my cast on crit a lot more consistently. So if you can get 20 cooldown recovery speed, that does mean that your arc and ball lightning are going to have um, much more proc rates. So 0.13 cooldown time you can see here. If you can manage to get it both on um, belt and boots, at this point, you're going to be firing off potentially 10 of these a second. So um, that's something I would recommend doing if you're doing the claw version, getting some cooldown recovery speed. And then at that point, you can just grab jewels that do some good lightning damage, spell damage, crit multi, and uh, if you still want a bit of attack speed as well. But this version with the claw will have a much better attack speed than the Mjolnir. So you don't have to worry about uh, stacking attack speed quite as heavily. So that's the version that will um, take you much further in single target damage, but it will be a little bit harder to um, do as balls to the wall, stupid mapping based purely off of shield charge. 
Uh, both versions, I do like using Call of the Brotherhood for, uh, you know, deeper delves and all that because freezing everything is pretty damn important. So that does mean that it takes your life pool down a bit and that's a bit awkward, but um, I think it's somewhat necessary for those delves. And the other strength in the Mjolnir setup of the build uh, version is that it does have the shield charge um, arcs going out all the time, but I've also ended up attaching added cold as one of my links. So if you attach added cold as a link to uh, your arc over here for the Mjolnir, every time you're shield charging, you're also most likely going to be shattering everything and freezing it. So that's the main difference between that setup. Uh, I don't necessarily need Call of the Brotherhood for a lot of the content since we do have that added cold and this version pretty much does need that call of the brotherhood now if you're actually going to set up this exact type of uh, claw setup i will go over that real quick because uh, it's slightly different you still put righteous fire and duration up here you then put um your level 21 arc if you have one in the main setup over here so that you're actually proccing level 21 arcs put your val arc just uh doing nothing so it's just purely going to be triggered for uh, additional lucky procs and damage you chuck your power charge on crit onto um, this over here so your storm brand is now going to be doing curse on hit warlords and also power charge on crit while your um, blood rage then goes over here and is attached to arcane surge so the setup changes just a little bit the playstyle shouldn't really change at all uh, except now your storm brand is giving you power charges on crit and your blood rage which is an instant cast so you can cast it whenever you want gives you arcane surge a hundred percent of time at this point uh, if you weave it into your rotation so that's how the setup changes from um, claw to mjolnir from mjolnir to claw Overall, if I were to tell you which one to do, I would say probably easier, more worth doing the claw version because uh, the gearing's a lot simpler and overall the end game content should be easier. But the Mjolnir version, um, it's probably going to be a lot cheaper to begin with because uh, these aren't going to cost too much, uh, especially after like a week or so. There's something like 10c and all you need is a bunch of strength in your gear little bit of fine tuning uh, on attack speed and it will get you going whereas if you really want to fine tune the claw version you're probably looking at you know 5x for the claw and then a good 5 to 10x for the rest of the build and uh, that's if you want to really push it to its limits but it looks like it should have some strong potential to um, even be done on somewhat of a budget so this is the ball lightning and arc revised sort of pulp pen build i'd say it's uh more worth doing than my pulp pen character because overall you can get a lot larger of a life pool you can still shield charge around and get fortify and then the damage is still very respectable so if you're looking for a character like that i'd take this one over the pulp pen one from delve uh, for now though guys i'm going to leave you with the mjolnir uber elder kill still very respectable it's not the worst kill in the world but uh it was a lot better using the claw so thanks for watching guys, hope you enjoyed the character, and see you next time. Okay, let's start like that, and now pop our shit. Okay, yeah, like I said, with flasks, not bad. Somewhat flask dependent though. And then add phase should be good. Yeah, pretty damn good. Uh, building up vast skills, yeah, reliable. Holy shit! My shield charge can go off if I let it. <laughs> I just kind of just. I don't know, let it go just then. And it went boop 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 boop. Ah, oh, that's not fair. I tried to move. I definitely should have moved. That was a move. But I was like kinda locked into my attack and it just didn't fucking go in time. What the records show, I was aware of my impending doom if I stood still, and I tried to change it. Oh, 
All in all, it's pretty good. Like, for the fight. I think I could do several runs without feeling bad. It's a lot nicer than the Guardians, for example. The Guardians are much more uncomfortable, depending on their map mods and stuff. Like it took a longer time than usual to go off. I was getting concerned for my safety. Oh, I just killed him in time. Yeah, look, that's very deathless doable, but I fucked it up! Stevenon, thanks for 38 months. Like, two good dinners somewhere. <laughs> An 86 shaped hubris. We care about that? And a void forge! Holy fuck, I never find void forges. Ever. That's like 10C. Yeah. 